Hello friends, welcome. In today's video, I'll be discussing the IMO performance standard of the rate of turn indicator. And I will also share some tricks so that you can easily remember it for exams. And before I start, I would like to do a personal ad. This is a book, the story of which was created at sea. It just came through me. I've enjoyed writing this book and I'm sure people who are interested in reading books are going to enjoy reading it. If any one of you is curious about this book and wants to read it and wants more information, then I would suggest you may follow me on Instagram. The link to my accounts can be found in the description box. Thank you. Let's get started. If you have seen my other videos on the performance standard, you know that looking at the equipment, you can always tell various performance standards that are actually needed in creating that. If you just remember how it looks, then it's easy to remember the points. So the first point is always a general requirement. And in this case, they have another resolution 281, which is for shipborne electronic navigational aids, which is a standard requirement. And if I share that procedure with you, it's basically six points. And the first is introduction, which says that all electronic equipments as per regulation 12 of chapter five of SOLAS should comply with the below standards. And those standards include the basic operation, how it should be displayed, etc. The third point is about power supply, which states that the equipment should normally work with the power supply that is expected on the vessels. It should be protected from a current surge. And if two power sources are available, then interchange should be quick. Fourth point is about the durability and resistance to the environmental conditions which is basically vibration, humidity, changes of temperature that are likely to be experienced. And finally, last two points are interference and miscellaneous. Interference covers the electromagnetic interference or sound related interference. And miscellaneous covers the instructions that a particular equipment should be easily operated on board a ship by a normal person. So after covering the common points which are applicable to all electronic navigational equipments, this is how a rate of turn indicator looks like. And as you look at the picture, I'll start reading the operational standards, which is point number two. The rate of turn should be capable of indicating rates of turn to port and starboard of the ship to which it is fitted. So this one is no brainer rate of indicator. The purpose itself is the performance standard point number one. The next point is that rate of turn indicator may be self-contained. Alternatively, it may form part of or derive information from any other appropriate equipment. And before we read the other standards, I want you to notice carefully that the rate of indicator is circular in shape. Zero degree is right on the top and on the starboard side, it's with a green mark in the port side with a red mark. And the 10 degree mark is bigger than the five degree mark. And each degree is represented clearly. Now, as you remember this picture, let me go through the points of the performance standard. The indication required should be provided by a zero center analog type. So we had the zero in center. Then the scale should be analog type, preferably circular, which it was. A turn of ship to port should be indicated on the left of the zero point and a starboard turn to the right of the zero point. There is also a requirement that if the actual rate of turn exceeds what is marked on the rate of indicator max, then it should be positively indicated. And this is usually done with a full scale deflection. So there's no controlling point after 30 degrees. The needle can go further away, giving the navigator a positive indication that the rate of turn is actually much higher. Then there's a requirement that positive indication of port and starboard should be provided on such displays. And as you can see clearly with the color and marking port and starboard, it's positively indicated which side is which. Further requirement is that the length of the scale in either direction from zero should not be less than 120 mm. The sensitivity of the system should ensure that a change in rate of turn of one degree per minute is represented by a distance of not less than four mm on its scale. So each graduation length is four mm. And if I multiply it by 30, it's 120 mm, which is the requirement for the length of the complete scale. Some of the ships have larger scale than 30 degrees, but I've mentioned here 30 because that is the minimum requirement for the rate of turn indicator. Further, which I've already discussed 
is that the scale should be marked in intervals of 1 degree per minute on both sides of zero. Scale should be marked with figures every 10 degrees per minute. Every 10 degree mark should be significantly longer than the 5 degree mark which I had shown you in the diagram initially. And thus these two marks will be significantly longer than the 1 degree mark. Further these marks should be red or light color on a dark background. Additionally, a linear range scale may be provided. And also there is a requirement that damping of rate of turn indicator should be provided with a time constant which may be varied during operation in the range 0 to at least 10 seconds. Then the requirement for accuracy that indicated rate of turn should not deviate from the actual rate of turn by more than half a degree per minute plus 5% of the indicated rate of turn of the ship. So if you calculate as per this, the maximum error that you can expect up to 10 degrees, it's about 1 degree. At 30 degrees, it will be about 2 degrees. Then the equipment is also affected by the rolling and pitching motion of the ship. So the requirement for that is that periodic rolling of the ship with an amplitude of 5 degrees, that means the rolling of 5 degrees and with the rolling period of 25 seconds and similarly for the pitching motion, 1 degree of pitching with a period of 20 seconds should not change the mean value of the indicated rate of turn by more than half a degree per minute. And with these specific conditions, half a degree error is further allowed. Then finally, rate of indicator should meet these accuracy requirements at all ship speed up to 10 knots. And finally, the operation requirement, the rate of turn indicator should be ready for operation and comply with these standards within 4 minutes of being switched on. And the next point is very common which is that in case it's not working or it's working it should not degrade the performance of any other equipment which is connected to it. And further there is a requirement that there should be means available to the operator to verify if the equipment is working properly. I hope I have made it simpler for you. If you just look at this diagram and remember it, circular scale 0 on top, 10 should be longer, 5 a little less longer starboard side is indicated on the right hand side port is indicated on the left they are positively marked it's lightly written with a dark background length of the scale is 120 mm 4 mm between each graduation up to 30 degrees the minimum requirement for the range of scale and 30 into 4 is 120 then we had the accuracy requirements half a degree of error in various conditions and the operational requirements like it should not degrade the other equipments. I hope these points will be easier to remember now and it was a useful video for you. If you have any feedback, suggestion or comment then please do write down below. All the best for exams and as always, thank you for watching.